What's up guys, it's Dollmatter here, and today we are going to be reacting to another Brandon Herrera video. So this one is the AR-180, the IRA's Lucky Charm. Uh, so yeah, for those of you who don't know, the IRA was, you know, really synonymous with the Irish independence movement. Um, basically a, I guess you could say terrorist organization, freedom fighter, depends on your opinion. I mean... It's kind of undeniable they were a terrorist organization in a sense because it's literally, you know, the tactics they used, their dictionary definition of a terrorist organization. Um, I guess, you know, whether you consider that a good thing or a bad thing depends on your uh, political beliefs. Um, but <laughs> I'm going to get so many angry comments for this video. I can already see it. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I'm sure everyone knows what the IRA is. What is up, you sexy? Link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it. YouTube mother lovers, in honor of St. Patrick's Day, today's range video might get a little troubled. <laughs> Come out of you black and tans. Come and fight me, I command. This is a dope version of the song. I've only ever heard the, uh, like, like the, the, I guess, I guess it's probably not the original because the original probably wasn't recorded, but like, I've only ever heard like the folk song version. It's like Celtic techno oh, yeah. rock. This is why Ireland isn't free. <laughs> what is going on guys? We are back. I mean, yeah, I don't think, I might be wrong here because I'm not like really, really well versed in my history of like the troubles in the Irish independence movement, but I don't think they ever actually won a battle against the British. I'm pretty sure it was just, you know, all the bombings and stuff and then, you know, basically just support from abroad that eventually led to them being, you know, gaining independence and then they, they still don't have full independence, although Northern Ireland will probably be part of Ireland soon because the Protestants just don't have kids. The Catholics really don't have kids anymore either, but they have more, you know, more kids than like the Protestants do. Back in the office and today's topic for our range video is the AR-180, AKA my little Armalite. If you're wondering my what all the imagery is all about, of course it's because the AR-180 is very famous for its use by the IRA. The IRA of course being very famously unhappy for a certain group of folks going after their lucky charms. <laughs> now of course in making this video, I'm not doing it because I like or support the IRA. They were pretty heavily socialist, of course, and really hurt a lot of innocent people. So I'm not doing this video because I like the IRA or I support them. I'm doing this video because I fucking hate the British. <laughs> I, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, mostly. Something I've always tried to do with the channel is try to use, you know, comedy and, uh, you know, period correct LARP, uh, depending on the weapon, to teach firearm history and mechanics. So that's kind of what we're doing today. So this right here, of course, is the infamous AR-180. Also worth pointing out, this is also the gun that was used in Terminator to shoot up the police station for whatever that's worth. I didn't even know that. So what the fuck is the AR? I honestly always thought he used a shotgun there. I, I never really paid close attention to what gun he was using. I always just assumed it was a shotgun. 180. A lot of you guys are probably gonna say, oh, this looks like an AR-15, because it kind of does. It has like a very similar profile to the AR-15, right? Especially older models. And you would be kind of close. So the AR for AR-15 does not stand for assault rifle. It's Everybody Armalite. tells you that, they're a fucking moron. It actually stands for Armalite, because it is an Armalite rifle. You see, Armalite was a weapon manufacturer, of course, that is, you know, they, they were the, the owners of the AR-15 brand. But it wasn't just the AR-15. Of course, there's other rifles, like, for example, the AR-10, and this one would be the AR-18. You see, Eugene Stoner didn't just stop. Yeah. You know what? It's really funny because, like, in gaming, AR is so frequent. I think I think this is the reason why. Is because in gaming, AR is just frequently used as a term for an assault rifle, right? People use assault rifle, battle rifle. Um, usually, AR is anything that's like automatic, and battle rifle is anything that's like burst. 
Uh, so, you know, so many people that, like, you know, they, so sh- they, they, they their entire concept of, like, what a gun is comes from either video games or movies. And because of that, they hear AR and they think, oh, video games, assault rifle. But no, like an actual AR, like a real world AR means Armalite rifle. Video game AR, just generic term for an assault rifle. Real world AR, Armalite rifle. At the AR-15. He went on to do a, a number of other designs, including the AR-18, where he embraced the based piston design. That's right, AR guys. The guy who developed the AR-15 later realized pistons are pretty fucking cool. But this right here is not an AR-18. This is the AR-180. So what the fuck is the difference? So the AR-180 is basically a radically simplified version of the AR-18 where they decided, hey, this is a really cool weapon system, weapon platform. Let's see if we can make this as cheap as possible to make it you know, mass producible. We can make it cheap, we can make it fast, and we can get it into the hands of anybody who might be requiring a lot of assault rifles very quickly. (laughs) Which is how the IRA... Look, I'm not saying it's right, I'm saying it happened. Another interesting part, if you look at this, uh, you know, the the pistol grip says AR-18, you know, Armalite. Um, Something that I heard is that a lot of the plastic that was done for Armalite was actually done by Mattel. Which, if you look at this, project, <laughs> it's I'm hilarious. Not saying that it's true, but I would totally believe it. So theoretically, the same people that are producing Barbies for children were also producing handguards for the IRA. Hey, plastic, plastic. Of Barbie, if you're planning on watching the new Barbie movie with Ryan Gosling and adopting a new personality, be sure to subscribe. OMG, <laughs> it's literally me. <laughs> Man, you know what's funny? This is five months old, so this would have been before the Barbie movie, right? Because that didn't come out until. What was it, like a month ago, a month and a half ago? He's like way ahead of the curve on that because so many people thought that after seeing that movie that became, you know, I'm Ken Uff and all those memes. So there are tons of photos of this thing being used during the Troubles. And in fact, in a lot of the pro IRA music and things that you guys may have heard, um, they actually reference this rifle by name quite a lot. Again, the My Little Armalite. This was seen in Ireland as a symbol of resistance to the crown. Funny enough, not the only gun that was famous for that at the time. In fact, one of the other weapons that kind of became culturally synonymous with the IRA was the Barrett M82, which is really interesting because at the time, the Barrett M82 was pretty fucking new. It was still kind of a new gun. They really weren't widely produced yet, and they weren't in in mass circulation, which begs the question, how did they they end up in the hands of the IRA? Ronnie, how did they end up in the hands of the IRA? Do you actually believe the queen died of natural causes? <laughs> ADD break. Instead of our patented white claw penetration test this time around, you know, obviously we're kind of, you know, fighting the British. So we're throwing our own, like, I guess you would call it like a Dublin tea party, taking out some twisted tea. Let's see how the AR-180 handles it. Free I've never actually had a twisted used tea. pair of kinky boots in three, two, one. <laughs> oh man. That's gonna be sticky later. It all came back at him. It's actually interesting is how little it fucking moved. So obviously it was a full penetration. Phrasing. Went in through the front and then right out through the bottom of the backside here. Split it open almost all the way to the top on both sides. Yeah, it's crazy just how much, uh, I guess, pressure buildup there was from the time the bullet entered the front to the time it hit the back that it actually started blowing this out harder because that all of, uh, obviously all of that extra energy that's now inside of this can wants to go somewhere and there's already a hole in the front so it's throwing it back where you, you're normally throwing it back jesus christ there's normally <laughs> you have a bigger exit wound than you would have an entrance wound for example the reason why john f kennedy um had a bigger exit at the rear of his head implying that he was not actually shot from behind the fuck is up with that Seriously. What is the government going to tell us the truth about that? So let's talk about... <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's, I think that was the first video I ever reacted to, uh, to from him was the, uh, the Kennedy assassination video. Ergonomics of the AR-180. Ergonomics controls, you know, manual of arms. So for one, let's take out the magazine. We have a push-button magazine release right here, just like the AR-15. This one right here looks correct for the AR-180, but it is, in fact, a modified AR magazine with a very tilty boy follower, which is why um, it has been an absolute pain in the ass to get this gun to run correctly. 
Fuck. You can just fucking feel it. You can just feel it fucking malfunction. Now that we got the magazine out, we'll go ahead and obviously show clear. The weapon is clear and we are safe. The safety selector is ambidextrous. So you have it on both sides. You have safe here and fire in the middle, a semi, uh, just like the AR-15. This little foldy boy here is a dust cover. So again, kind of like the AR, but you have the ejection port that's still open here. And of course, when this charging handle comes back, it just pops that down. So it's out of the way when the gun cycles. You have a stamped trigger, which is really interesting. And it is one of the trigger pulls of all time. Got your standard iron sights here. So you've time. got a front sight here. It's like a front sight gas block combo and a rear peep hole style sight there. As for the stock, we do have a folding stock and it is very, it's a folding stock. <laughs> There's like almost nothing good he could say about this gun. It's just like a hunk of fuck cl like clamored together. The top and bottom and you have to kind of push these in at the same time. And you have to push them in just far enough. There you go that it releases the stock and this locks in the closed position like so. So it's kind of a pain in the ass to fold but all you have to do to unfold it is just grab it right here, pull it out and you are ready to fuck. So we're gonna do our breakdown here in a second just to show you kind of what's going on in the guts of this gun, because honestly, it is a little weird. And if you're interested in stuff like that, by the way, I do wanna give a little bit of extra love to our main channel sponsor now, SDI or the Sonoran Desert Institute. If you think gun breakdowns like this are really cool, I would definitely recommend checking them out. I'm gonna leave the links down in the description and in the pinned comment. They're a fantastic sponsor. We love working with them. I'm sorry I'm dying of hay fever while I say all of this. It sounds like my throat is currently being fucking attacked and face fucked by nature. We love SDI, go ahead and check them out. But what I was going to show you was this really cool optic that we were using here. So this is basically the precursor to the modern red dot. This is what's called an occluded eye gun sight. So what this is is basically a little fiber optic in here, kind of like you'd have on like an ACOG or something like that, except you don't actually get to see through the scope. It's pretty much impossible to see on camera, but this is completely black inside. You cannot see through this. Well, what you do see is a red dot because of this fiber optic. So what you have to do is when you keep both eyes open while you're shooting, it merges your vision so that the red dot that you are seeing in your right eye merges with the vision that you have out of your left eye. Thereby, when it blends the two, it projects that dot onto what you're seeing out of your left eye, which is really fucking crazy. That does that's honestly pretty cool. It's it's like literally an optical loop. Man, in some ways you could almost argue that's better than the red dot, right? Cause like, well, I guess the red dot just shows up in there, but like uh, it'd be better than like a laser sight or something cause they wouldn't see it themselves. You would be the only one to see it. That's actually kind of fascinating. I'm surprised that we don't use more stuff like that. Doesn't sound like it should work, but it clearly does. What we have here is actually a mount that is on the AR-180 that is made specifically for this, so. We're gonna do here. This has got a, like a little plunger that keeps tension on this, right? This is spring loaded. Grab this back here, put this on, and slide this forward. And we're gonna lock it down with that little lever so that it cannot move anywhere. And now we have basically a very, very a rudimentary EOTech. This was legitimately like the precursor to the ACOG. The question is, does it work? The answer is, it clearly worked well enough. Given that this video is heavily themed with, you know, elements of Irish history, I figured it only made sense to call up one of our Irish friends to help with this video. So we have Mr. Tweak. How are you doing today, sir? Very well. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. Well, have you ever shot the AR-180 before? I have not. You haven't? Oh, oh okay. So he's actually Irish. I was expecting it to be like some kind of like Irish American guy, but no, he's, he's actually got like the Irish accent. I thought you did. I thought we've, we've taken you out with one of the range days and shot this before. I don't before. think I actually shot it that day. Oh, we can fix that. Yeah. Well, would you like to give her a shot, sir? I would absolutely love to give it a shot. Well, there you are. Thank you, sir. I'm left-handed. Oh, I forgot your wrong-handed shit. The wrong-handed. Either way, that optic's going to be really interesting. I'm curious to see if you can hit with that. All right, what am I going for here? All right, let's say middle steel. Uh, middle, middle steel silhouette. Right. Are you telling me the gun jammed? It did. Shocking. So you're hitting a little left. Little left. Oh, she does not want to go in. I've heard that before. That is a fucking weird malfunction. So oh, I pulled wow. the fucking bullet out. Oh, hello. You are covered in powder. <laughs> that is. 
So you're still a little bit chop left. the top off of that. There you go. Uh, there we go. There she goes again. Yeah, like this, Lance, if you can zoom in, <laughs> please don't like kill my fucking finger with fucking AR-180 thumb, but no. this is what we're- Man, th this, this gun seems like such a hunk of fuck. It's just like, the, it sounds cheap when he moves it around, the plastic looks cheap, everything on it seems to be a pain in the ass to use, it's constantly jamming. Bad. Talking about when we're having magazine feed issues, that shouldn't be a thing. Just try to ride her forward, see what happens. There it goes. That is so. Uh. There she goes again. It's almost like we're having some troubles. <laughs> Okay, so now for the breakdown. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take this pin out the front here. Unlike an AR-15, where an AR-15 has two takedown pins, one in the rear and one in the front that actually just stays in. This one just has the front pin here. So what we're gonna do is push this forward and our upper and lower separate. And this is where you're really gonna see just how cheaply made this gun is. So if you can zoom in a little bit, um, you can see that this is just all stamped sheet metal. This is just all just, it's flat sheet steel that was rolled up and spot welded and just kind of like that, that stock hinge is crudely welded on. This, this gun was made very, very cheaply. But hey, it clearly works. I mean, as long as you have a decent fucking magazine. The whole fire control <laughs> group is also stamped as well. So like I said, that you've got that stamped trigger and the hammer is also stamped, which is pretty rad that they can do that. But setting our lower down, let's look at our upper. Let's go ahead and remove this here. This is our recoil spring assembly. You see you've got a dual recoil spring thing there. Let's go ahead and pull this back out, and I believe we have to pull this charging handle out. You see there's no slot for that to you know, come out the rear. So remove the charging handle, and here we have our bolt and carrier. This here should look really familiar if you're familiar with the AR-15. We have a star pattern bolt here, and on the side here we even have that cam track that looks pretty much exactly like the AR-15. The big difference is that it is not round, it is squared off. So you got these two holes here in the rear where the recoil spring assembly obviously, you know, uh, goes into the back of the bolt carrier. And then up front where you would have like a gas key or something on an AR-15, you just have that little impact mark there for where the short stroke piston engages the bolt carrier, which allows the gun to cycle. You see gas is diverted from the barrel uh, when the weapon fires. Uh, all that extra gas and everything is siphoned off through this gas block and hits a short stroke piston, which again goes through the gas system here and smacks the bolt carrier right here on the front, which that unlocks the bolt, which allows it to freely move through the receiver, which theoretically allows that to then extract the round that is in the chamber, pull that out, eject it, and then load a new round. Again, assuming that your magazine is not a massive piece of fucking shit. <laughs> I'm how mad he is about the mag. Uh, but let's say you have to defend your shooting stars and lucky clovers. Let's go ahead and get this gun back together. I'm gonna throw that bolt back in. It took me a bar. Recoils. It took me way too long to realize that shooting stars and lucky clovers is a fucking lucky charms reference. Bring assembly. Fit that there into the back of the bolt carrier. Go ahead and take our charging handle, put this into place. There we go. Lock that up good and tight. Grab our lower back. Where did I put that pin? Push this lower into place here, hinge this up. Line up our hole, put the pin in, and we are ready to go. Grab our magazine, insert like so, and now we are ready to spy on British Night Patrol where they are holding each other's hands. And now these sound like <laughs> educational bullshit, now you get an explosive 50 cal round as a treat. Now last video, if you guys recall, we did the world's most powerful pistol, uh, the 50 BMG single shot pistol. I, I pistol. think it's you so, know, pistol. what is that? It's so weird. But what we failed to do is accurately hit a steel plate with a Mark 211 Ralphus round. These things are like 80 fucking dollars around and I only had one on set that day. So as a man of my word, I said we'd come back out here in the next video and fire this at the plate and actually hit it and see what happens. We got the Ralphus round. We got the Fitty Pistol. Fitty Let's pistol. see what we can do.
Now last time I was a little bit low, so I'm gonna try to aim a little bit higher. Now this is made to penetrate armor, so I don't think we're gonna have a big issue with splash. Again, range barrel here uh, to cover the family jewels while I am shooting, because let's be honest, that's really all I care about. I should be okay from shrapnel at this distance, at this, uh, this angle. A lot of the, uh, if there's gonna be spall or shrapnel, it's gonna be, you're probably diverting out to the sides, so we should be good here. But let's see how this armor plate Famous does last against. Order. Mark 211, Ralphus. Man, that little, being said, we are quasi-professional. We're actually literal professionals. Is, is this a fucking... Is this like a mass-produced gun, or did they just, like, build this thing on their own? Because that thing is wild-looking. I do this for a living. Kind of like a stuntman. Don't, don't do what I do at home. Unless you want to end up on the Darwin Awards, which we should have a new episode of next week. I don't know. We'll see if you're, you're good little boys and girls. Firing in three, two, one. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. There was so much water, like on the surface of this barrel. I literally thought I got shot for a moment. <laughs> it just felt liquid. I'm like, oh no, nope, that's it. I just got scotted. Fuck. Man. Did it, did it go through? Oh yeah, it did. Okay, so let's take a look at our target here. Yeah, we absolutely penned this, as if this was ever a doubt. We had our impact still on the low side of the plate here. And on the back end, oh my God, this plate is still very, very hot to the touch. So the anti-spall coating, holy shit. Check this out. So the anti-spall coating did its job very well. Some of the shrapnel that would have been coming off of this is actually caught in the plate. That is 50 BMG copper jacket. That is the, the ja jacketing on the round. Uh, so the round itself, the penetrator went all the way through clearly but the copper jacket exploded and went in a bunch of different directions but still got caught <laughs> he's trying to pick that off with his fingers it's like bro if the 50 cal didn't rip it off you're not ripping it off with your fucking hands actual anti-spall coat that is super fucking interesting i'm not sure if any part of this is even remotely scientific but i will say it is interesting because i'm a guy and i like to see shit get broken just like world records in my parents marriage <laughs> Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And of course, I hope you guys know that all of this was all in good fun. It's St. Patrick's Day weekend, so I'm gonna go get belligerently drunk with my friends. I hope you guys are out doing the same. Be sure to stay safe. You know, don't be an idiot. Go out, get a designated driver. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And don't do half the shit that I would do. <laughs> Anyhow, I hope that your weekend is free from troubles and I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks, guys. Oh, we got knee. Oh yeah, we do have some. I always, I, I always love the uh, little blooper clips he puts at the end. Happy, happy. Fuck you. Right off the bat. So it's kind of a pain in the ass to fold, but to unfold, all you have to do is grab it by the stock. Fuck. So given the theme <laughs> of the video, you know we've got a little bit of Irish history. I figured we call one of our I fuck me. One of our IR or IRA friends. You were going. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah, who man? Just the that thing is. Oh my god, that BMG pistol he was using at the end there is just wild. Like, I, I, honestly, that just like threw me off completely. Kind of took me out of the whole IRA thing, and I was just like looking at that thing. I I, I want to know like, did they make that on their own? Did they mod like is that modified? Is is that like a fully mass produced gun? I've never seen that thing before. That was wild. Anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.